are back from the break. <laughs> we are. This is, this is true. <laughs> I am your host. I am attorney Stephen Leahy. I'm here with my nephew, my co-host, my very good friend, Jim Leahy. These words he speaks are true. We're all human areas, too. We don't pledge allegiance to. Yeah, we do. Hillary Clinton. <laughs> We're going into the next segment, the blog. She is the blog. It's the blog segment. <laughs> the blog. The blog. <laughs> That's right, ladies and gentlemen, the blog segment where Attorney Stephen Leahy every week I'm going to interrupt you a little bit, because did you see that Alice Cooper is going to appear in Waukegan, that Genovese? Uh, is he really? Is it Genovese? Is Genesee. It? Genesee. 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 Gen- Genevieve. I think, I think Gen... <laughs> Gen- <laughs> what? Refer- refers to a salami of some kind. Whatever. Genovese? I have, I have seen a band there. I saw Ario Speedwagon there right after they opened, and it was awesome. It's a small, it's a small it's venue. It's a nice theater. Nice small venue. Nice. If any of you out there have ever seen Alice Cooper, she is great. <laughs> <laughs> and I got to say, his shows are awesome. He It's, it's more of a theatrical um, at least it was. I saw one that was more of a band where he was. He played like he was a band. Well, you saw money theatrical first, yeah. the, the, the theme. But I saw. I saw like the the Alice Cooper show, and they he had. Um, it was just awesome. Big TV. It was awesome. He's. He, so that's one of the bands I might go see. You're gonna go see Alice Cooper. I, I might. What does it come? What does he gonna play? I, I think it's coming up soon. Or, or I'll you go know, with so, you. Uh, the IRS Radio Hour. We're coming to you live from Alice Cooper. <laughs> Alice. Anyway, she's great. So you should go see her. Okay, go. I like the I like the joke. Well, anyway, the uh, segment where Attorney Stephen Leahy sits for a week and writes about the thoughtful things that'll help you guys, the ones who are in debt, out. And what are we going to be talking about today? Today, I'm going to ask the question: What organization is tougher than the IRS? Ooh, ooh, ooh! Well, let's, I know. Let's go to Debbie and let's see what she's. What's her? What does she think? I think the organization that's tougher than the IRS is PETA. <laughs> <laughs> the people who protect animals, they're very tough. They are. The EPA. It, or, you know, ever see did you ever see those people out there when they're trying to they're trying to stop the whalers? Man, they are yes. they will they will ram those boats. They will put the they will kill anybody to save those whales. <laughs> <laughs> they actually will. How about you, Jim? Take a guess. I said the EPA, but let me guess another one. Uh I don't know. Okay, the US well, Department of Corrections? It, it's it, actually if you listen to the show. Jim, I don't, and Debbie, you would probably know the mm. answer. To the, <laughs> you would probably know the answer to this question because I have said it on this show before. And the only organization, because remember, the IRS is the biggest, baddest collection. <gasps> oh, of, that's what it is—the IRS. How can the IRS be stronger than the IRS, Jim? How be, how can they be tougher <laughs> than the IRS? All right, so the only organization that's bigger than the that's tougher than the IRS is the federal court system, and that's why sometimes and remember there's six things you can do if you if you owe the IRS money. One of those six things is file for protection under the bankruptcy laws, and the bankruptcy laws are are administered by the federal court system, and they're the only ones that the that are tougher than the IRS. And why is that? Because the court the judge can bring the IRS in and make you know and call find them in contempt and and uh, stop anything that they're doing so for instance i had a client once and he came to see me after the irs started levying his a uh, paycheck and he was a 1099 employee so they were taking every dollar that he made and he rented well his rent was coming due and if he didn't pay his rent his his uh his uh landlord would evict him right so if I don't get my money, I'm going to be evicted. So usually I can stop a, a levy pr- pr- fairly quickly, usually. Um, but sometimes you get an IRS agent that just either they don't like the guy for some reason. Maybe they had some sort of interaction and they don't like him. We were talking a little bit about this, you know, about your friend. Yeah. Uh, you know, sometimes when when uh, my friend. Yeah, your friend about that that was uh, that was patrolling and stopped people and used the power when people gave him a hard time. Oh yeah, yeah, they used yeah. their power to go against them. Okay, so same thing with IRS agents, right? If if for any reason maybe he woke up on the wrong side of the bed, and maybe his wife was mad at him, or maybe or maybe his boyfriend was mad at him, who knows? <laughs> Did you just make a comment like that? Did that <laughs> Did, just happen? Uh, you never know. But.
But <laughs> with the, they get on the uh, Dylan. The, you're going to say that about a man who I was. I know who you're talking about. I wasn't talking about Dylan. I but, agree with you. But I'm talking about the IRS guy. They get up and they don't. It's up to them whether they're going to stop a levy. And if he doesn't want to stop the levy, he just won't stop the levy. And I've had this happen with other clients too. And I'll talk about that in just a minute. Because what did we do to stop this? This guy. Sometimes the IRS agent drives the Chevy to the levy, but the, <laughs> but the levy was dry. It does happen. It does happen. I love the enthusiasm with it. That was, <laughs> but not in Louisiana because the levee's not dry in Louisiana. Hey, come on, that's uh, still. I'm not kidding. What do you think would happen down there? Hillary still hasn't gone down there. Okay, so let's talk about that at another time. Uh, anyway, uh, anyway, so what do we do? The only thing that could stop it, right? How, who could stop make the guy change? We went to his supervisor. We we had to file an appeal, but by the time the appeal got heard, we he'd already be moved out. He'd already been lost his place. So we filed for protection under the bankruptcy laws. And the federal court, when you file for protection under the bankruptcy laws, the federal court has a automatic stay, and it stops all creditors from any activity that they're doing even the IRS. And that's what happened. He stopped it. He got his money. He kept his house. And we worked out an agreement. Um, now, what, the re, one of the reasons why I'm going to talk about this is because most of my clients, not all, but many of my clients, are what they call above median uh, debtors. means that they make more than the average family of their size. And when that happens, the IRS is not very helpful to them because when they I've talked a lot on this show before is a lot of times the way you find a remedy to this is that they look at the IRS looks at your income and then they subtract from that all your reasonable and necessary expenses but what they think is reasonable and necessary and what you think is reasonable and necessary are not the same and so if I have a house that my mortgage is five thousand dollars for instance and I try to show the IRS that that's one of my expenses the IRS will say I'm not giving you that. You can't live in that house. We want you to move. And was like, well, you know, I'm just going to give up my house and move because because I owe the IRS. And the IRS says, yes, that's what that would, that's what we want you to do. So I had a client um, who had a very high mortgage, and his mortgage was probably seven thousand or something with taxes and everything. And the IRS would only allow him about twenty two hundred dollars. Well, what does that mean? That means his payment to the IRS, what they wanted, was way higher than than he couldn't make that payment and pay his mortgage. And um, it caused him to fall behind in his mortgage. And he came to see me. So what happens sometimes in Chapter 13, what that does is the IRS focuses on you paying the taxes. And they're going to take all your money to pay the taxes. If you file for protection under the bankruptcy laws, sometimes you could change that focus from cha- from paying the taxes to keeping your house, and that's what we did for this gentleman. So sometimes, sometimes if they're old, especially if they're older taxes, I might be able to pay the IRS ten cents on the dollar. If I'm not in bankruptcy, they'll never agree to that. They don't want you to pay ten cents on the dollar. They want a hundred percent, and they're going to take your house to make to get the hundred percent. So this is one way you can use the federal court system that to beat the IRS at their own game. Well, and that's so, good. Well, see, that's what we talked about on a couple other shows, didn't we? Is where why do this alone? Why no, well, would you do this you, alone? You could never figure that out by no, yourself. No, I agree with that. And I had someone come in yesterday, come to see me and they filed bankruptcy with the wrong attorney and they got clobbered in the bankruptcy court because it wasn't, there's lots of reasons, but because the attorney that they hired didn't understand taxes in bankruptcy, didn't go, didn't file a right plan for them and they got in trouble. And now, now they're coming to see me and now, and they're very hesitant because they already hired a lawyer and that lawyer took all their money and didn't help them. So they're worried that, that maybe that it's going to happen with me. Now I assured them that that's not, and I get, you know where they came from. They came from a, David Hochberg, and uh, he oh, referred them to me. I've heard of him before. Yes, you have heard of David Hochberg. So, and he's a stand-up guy, and I am, and I wouldn't be, you know, I help people. That's what I do. I'm not there to take advantage of you and try to take your money. I'm there to help you. That's what's important to Look, me. Look, but we preach that every time. Why go to somebody like that? Why go to that inexperienced guy? You have the experience. In that's fact, right. What was the greatest settlement you've ever had? Oh, well, we talk about that, but that's a different If you Look, what was the greatest settlement okay, you ever $25 had? $25 for 55000 That was the best settlement I, I ever mean, had. I mean, what? Actually, actually, I could have done better than that because I had people who owed more than that in taxes, and we filed Chapter 7, and they did not pay anything. So zero for $50,000. So, so that's look, happened before. Go with experience. Don't fight this alone. Somebody can help you. I'm not sitting here begging. You do, you do what you got to do. I'm begging. But- 
<laughs> but look, if you have, if you need the help, call the man. 312-664-6649. Open tax resolution and chicagotaxteam.com. Your central or your hub for IRS related issues. Now guys, stay tuned because after the commercial break, more IRS radio hours coming at you on AM560 The, the Answer. answer. 